Let's do this. Going all carbon fiber is the best way to make a lightweight snowmobile. Wrong. Sort of. Roll the intro. Weight. One of your greatest enemies when you're trying to have a lot of performance out of your snowmobile. We all know by now that the more amount of weight you have to carry around, the more you lose performance. Because all of that mass has to take energy in to both increase and decrease its momentum. So the less mass you have to carry around, the best. Especially if all that mass is not all that useful in the end. In this video, I'll go over some of the paths you can take to save weight and some of the fundamentals behind it. And hopefully you will apply some of these concepts to your snowmobile to hopefully increase the performance of them. All right, all right, I get it. So where do we start? How do I get my snowmobile lighter? Well, you have a few options. But there is four main ways in my opinion to save weight and they are all equally as important. But I think I should start with the simple and obvious stuff and then move our way to more complex and difficult processes. I know some of these chapters might seem like no-brainers but oftentimes the simplest stuff is the stuff that is the most overlooked. You should probably keep watching because I'm sure you will learn something in the end that you can hopefully apply yourself. All right let's go! Chapter 1 The Leading Parts I told you this one would be simple, but let's face it, if it's not there, you don't have to move it around. But in all seriousness, that's a big deal. We almost all carry around stuff we both know we will never use. Or have some stuff on our machine that we installed at some point, got disassembled, and some of the stuff is still on the machine. We're talking clamps, bracket, spare parts, damaged part, bungee cord. Wait, I thought you were talking about remote control snowmobiles. Well, not in the last sentence, but also yes. The concept in this video apply to all snowmobile sizes and to all vehicles for that matter. It's often easier when you take an example in the real world and then you apply the same concept to the smaller stuff as well. I am myself guilty of this sometimes. I have designed in the past some spaces for wires to go through, but ended up never using it. But that's no big deal, right? We're talking like what, two grams? Yes, two gram, and that's a big deal. Every gram counts. I've heard a quote from a wise guy once, and I thought I would share it here. He said, and I quote, A thousand lightweight parts can still make something that is heavy. And also, the battle for weight is also won by a thousand cuts. Adam Savage. Wait, is that the guy from... Yes, he's the host from Midbusters. The takeaway here is that it's often easier to save a little bit of weight here and there, rather than to save a big amount of weight all at one spot. Especially since when you take something off the snowmobile, you save 100% of its weight, and sometimes even more, but we'll get back to that later. In comparison, when you try to engineer the same part but lighter, sometimes you can save 30%, 40%, but you never save 100% of the weight of the part. What might seem like an insignificant amount of weight save will end up building up to a much bigger weight save in the end. Long story short, the biggest gains can often be found in this category here. But I need all of that stuff. Well then, we move on to the next category. Chapter 2. Material Selection This is where all of the carbon fiber myths are, but let's start at the beginning. Let's suppose that you have a part that is made of steel, but you don't since it would rust in the humidity. So let's use stainless as a far better example. Stainless is a heavy alloy, right? But why is it heavy? That's because the density of the material is high. Stainless steel can come in a few different blends or alloys, but let's use stainless 304 as an example because it's the most commonly used out there. Stainless 304 has a density of exactly 8 gram per cubic centimeters. So anything that has a smaller density than this will be lighter. As an example, water has a density of 1. So anything that is higher than 1 will sink and everything that is lighter than 1 will float. Let's go through a few materials density for fun. Let's start with the heaviest and move our way to lighter materials. Brass density. 8.73 grams per cubic centimeters. Steel density, 8.05 grams per cubic centimeters. Stainless 304, 8.00 gram per cubic centimeters. Right away, you see that if you had a brass axle, for example, and swapping it for a stainless steel one, you would save weight. Some material alloys have different properties and different densities, so you need to take that into account when you're designing something. But let's keep going. Titanium density, 4.5 gram per cubic centimeters. Aluminum 7075, 2.81. Aluminum 6061, 2.7. Aluminum 4043, 2.69 gram. 
aluminum 5356, 2.64 gram per cubic centimeters. I'm not going to claim I know all of these alloy characteristics perfectly, but I do use some aluminum welding rods, and right away I can see a difference between alloys. The 4043 is softer and less prone to cracking, while the 5356 is a bit stronger and more rigid in my observations. They all have their strengths and weaknesses, so there is a difference in what you should and should not be using for a given application. But let's look at some other materials. Carbon fiber density. This one varies a lot, from 1.75 gram to 1.93 gram per cubic centimeters. G10 or FR4 fire retardant, 1.8 gram per cubic centimeters. Magnesium density, 1.738. Carbon fiber sheets, 1.607. Wait, 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 wait. Carbon fiber twice? Well, carbon fiber is a composite, so the ratio of carbon fiber to bonding agent will make the final density change. The fibers is what makes carbon fiber strong, so the more bonding agent you have, the weaker the carbon fiber is. In my observation, the carbon fiber sheets that you can buy at a store were lighter than they were listed, so I figured it would be wise to add both here for comparison. Also, magnesium is never used in a pure form because it reacts violently with water. So it's often used in conjunction with some other materials to make some of the blends we talked about earlier. Fun fact, the Alpha Skid from Arctic Cat is a mix of aluminum and magnesium, which is two super light materials. Well, we reach carbon fiber, what can possibly be lighter than this? Well, you see carbon fiber is often used in racing and aerospace application for one single reason, because the stiffness and the tensile strength is insanely high for its weight. Pretty stiff. The tensile strength for steel is 400 megapascal, while carbon fiber is around 3,500 megapascal, which is why it is so popular. But if you do not need all that strength and you just need to make a cover, for example, there is some other materials that are lighter and that will make you save weight. And one simple way to do just that is plastics. PLA density, 1.24 grams. PETG plastic, 1.04. ABS density, 1.02. Nylon PA12 plastic density, 1.01 gram per cubic centimeters. I checked on a big list of plastic that were listed to find what the lightest plastic was, and it's apparently what's known as the PMP or polymethylpantene, which has an impressive 0.84 gram per cubic centimeters. But I don't think you can have access to that material very easily, and I'm not sure about its characteristics either, so we'll skip on that. We're getting close to the end. But there is one more material I want to talk about. It's easily accessible, quite stiff and strong, easy to work with, but sadly often overlooked. I'm of course talking about wood. Oak density, 0.85. Southern pine, 0.65. Cherry, 0.43. And the king of it all, Belza, at 0.11 gram per cubic centimeters. So just like the alloys, different wood have different properties. Some are soft and can easily be scratched by your nail, and some are really hard and perfect for stressed areas. Humidity also plays a big role in their density, so take these numbers with a grain of salt. It also changes shape slightly when moisture is present, so make sure that if you plan on using it in your build, make sure it's sealed properly. That was quite the list. I know there's a lot of material that are missing from this list, but these are the big lines. I know a small twig will never be as strong as a steel shaft, but the point of this list was if everything is equal, and you don't need the high stiffness or strength of a certain material, there is often some alternative that are lighter than you can use for your belts that will make you save weight. Oh, I was, I was listening. I, I was listening. So there you have it. This is a long video already, so I'm gonna make a separate video for the part design and multiple part design or cluster design. There is a lot to talk about there too, so I hope you will stick around. It should come live in about two or three weeks, hopefully. So thanks for sticking by to the end of this video. It really does mean a lot to me that you have interest in this sort of content. So I appreciate you sticking to the end of this video and thanks for writing with me. I said earlier in the video that if you take something off, you will often save more than 100% of its weight. Let me clarify that. Say that you have a massive motor and you want to go with something a bit smaller. Well, oftentimes you will save the weight of the motor, but you will also save the weight of the smaller gauge wire because you don't have as much power going through it. So a smaller gauge can be installed and also a smaller speed controller, a smaller battery and so on. 
So you will often save more than just the weight of the item that you change because all of the system changes. So long story short, changing an item or taking it off completely will sometimes result in more weight saves than you initially anticipated. And the same applies the other way around when you're adding weight. You will often add more weight than you anticipated. So that's something to keep in mind. See you soon. That is so weird. Wow. You better watch the next video. You better watch it.